Well, once again, I'm uh, pleased to uh, introduce and have another interview with Dr. Christopher Lowther. And hi, Chris, how are you doing? I'm pretty good, Kathleen. Great to see you again. Great to see you too. It's been a long time. And people have been wondering, when are we doing our next interview? So I was thrilled to be able to make connection up with you again. And today we're going to talk about the largest organ of the body, mm. the skin. Indeed, indeed. And I, I think that, uh, I think for many, this will be a surprising um, uh, interview uh, mm. just because the skin is so representative of so many of our symptoms. And a lot of times we don't fully understand that. So Chris, if you could just take us away and um, welcome again. Excellent, yeah. The skin, it's, uh, it certainly is the largest organ of the body. Um, <clears throat> my intention today is to simplify the skin and simplify the skin quote unquote conditions that we uh, have all have experienced at one point in time in our life, right? The common, the skin rashes, chicken pox, you name it. Um, and so we're going to look through the lens of German new medicine and the five biological laws to help us explain why we develop skin condition? Why do we develop at a certain time of our life? Uh, why on the left side of the body and not the right side of the body? Why on the inside of our arms and, and uh, or on our cheek? So these are all questions that uh, after we get through today will be answered. And I could assure you that it's most likely going to flip everything you've known about skin conditions <laughs> on its head. So let's get after it then. Um, right. I have some slides prepared for today and we have a, a lot of information to, to uh, get through. So without further ado, there we go. GNM perspective on skin conditions. This is the topic today, and we're going to first start with this disclaimer that the information is given in this presentation is educational purposes only, and it's not intended for professional medical advice. And I also want to give credit where credit is due. All my information that I'm going to be presenting today, including diagrams and images, have come from learninggnm.com and Carolina Markelin's website. Carolina and I have been uh, friends, colleagues. She's been my teacher since 2006. And I am of the opinion that this is, this website here is the ultimate resource for GNM in the English speaking world at this moment. So let's look here at the compass of German new medicine to get a little refresher. We did hibernate there for a little bit over the winter. And so I just want to briefly touch upon the five biological laws in a, in a very simplistic way, not getting very specific uh, but we will get specific as we explain uh, skin conditions. Um, so the first biological law is that it states that all so-called disease originates from an unexpected distress, something in our life, an experience that takes us completely off guard. We weren't prepared for. It's an unexpected event that triggers a biological response. 
This event also is highly subjective, meaning that each one of us can and will oftentimes perceive unexpected events in different ways, which then manifests differently in the body. They, it affects different organs of the body. And so me and you both, Kathleen, could be living together and experience an unexpected distress, and you may perceive it as a territorial anger conflict, which affects the stomach or the gallbladder. And I may experience it as an indigestible anger, which affects the small intestines and leads to diarrhea. And so this is a, a very important aspect of the unexpected distress, which we call a DHS in honor of Dr. Hammer's son, Dirk, Dirk Hammer syndrome. And so once the DHS is experienced so at the subconscious level, it activates a special biological program and we enter in to the first phase of the biological program, which is the conflict active phase. And this is where we experience prolonged stress, prolonged sympathetic, sympaticatonia is the term we use, sympaticatonia. And as that word indicates, it's in relation to our sympathetic nervous system of the autonomic nervous system. And so we'll experience cold hands, cold extremities. We lack appetite during this phase. We have sleep disturbances. We have trouble falling asleep at night because we're preoccupied with the unexpected distress. We don't have much of an appetite during this phase. Once the conflict, the biological conflict is resolved within the psyche, the psyche then becomes more at ease. We're no longer preoccupied with the conflict and we enter into the second phase, which is the healing phase. And this indeed is the most beautiful part of the biological program because this is where we begin to heal, not only within the psyche, but also in the brain and in the organ that has been affected. And this is also the phase where we discover how we have perceived the preceding unexpected shock. And by that, I mean, we start to develop symptoms, specific symptoms. And those symptoms are going to be related to a specific organ of the body. Now, there's also generalized symptoms that we all experience in the healing phase no matter what specific biological program is activated and no matter which organ is involved. And these general signs and symptoms of healing are inflammation, swelling, edema. Oftentimes the swelling and edema is accompanied by pain, discomfort. We're extremely fatigued at times. We have trouble uh, doing our daily activities because the, the fatigue is so much. So we want to sleep and rest. We also develop an appetite again, and we begin to eat and nourish our bodies during this recovery phase. This is very important to recognize, and it will take time as one learns the biological laws in German medicine and begins to experience life through this lens. And so when we become aware of the symptoms in their true nature, one of the most important things that happen is that we become less fearful of the symptoms. The symptoms now do not create fear or panic but are embraced as the body's natural way of healing from an unexpected distressful situation. And so this is the two phases 
of so-called disease. And this is, I feel, a very important biological law to contemplate and reflect upon, not only about in regards to our own life experiences when we develop certain symptoms, but then also our loved ones. And we'll start to soon see there is a timeline. There's a timeline that relates to the un, you know, when the unexpected distress occurred. And there's a, a moment when that shifted for us, either through the shifting of life circumstances or the shifting of our perception, our perspective of the conflict that we're going through. But something changes to allow our psyche, our biological psyche, psyche to go into the healing phase where most symptoms are experienced. Now, there's also another aspect of the biological programs that we need to be aware of, too, especially with this topic that we're going to cover today. And that's triggers or tracks, as we call it in German new medicine. And tracks are, uh, let's just say, pieces of information that are stored in our subconscious mind at the very moment we experience this DHS, this unexpected shock. And these tracks can be smells, sounds, time of year, location. It could be a person or place, like I said. But these are, and it's all, again, it's a subjective uh, situation. And knowing that the, the psyche, when the unexpected shock happens, we're in a heightened state of awareness. And so we don't know what our subconscious mind is recording at the moment. But what we'll find is sometimes is that when we enter into the healing phase, the healing phase can be disrupted by encountering another uh, a, a track or a trigger. So for example, we can be going through the healing phase and then all of a sudden those healing symptoms stop. They disappear and we become distressed again. We become preoccupied again. We lose our appetite. And that's an indication that we encountered a track. Oftentimes there's an emotional component when we encounter a track. Now, a track can also be encountered after we have completed the biological program. So for example, we could go through the conflict active phase, go into resolution and healing and completely finish the program the symptoms disappear because the healing is complete and then we encounter a track and we have a recurring symptom like a skin rash and so you can see the the knowledge of tracks and triggers are very important for us to again have in our awareness as we apply these biological principles knowing that if we find ourselves in a in a situation which is often termed chronic a chronic skin rash we want to know, we we are now going to know that this chronic skin rash is associated with certain tracks and we need to um, put our detective hat on and and discover what those tracks are and as i said and it the, the track is going to have some emotional component. So when we encounter, we're going to feel it somewhere in the body. So the, the, the awareness, the attention increases when we know this dynamic, this phenomenon. So, and so, so Chris, let uh -huh. me ask you a question. Um, so does that mean that um, there are two things come to mind that uh, perhaps we haven't resolved the initial conflict that was situated in the psyche, body, and mind at the same time when we had the unexpected uh, shock, or um, there was another trigger that occurred, another track that occurred during the events of the healing, perhaps. How do we, how do we actually know if we have um, moved from the first phase to the second phase? I mean, how, how do you, I mean, is, is a 
definite line drawn there, or is that perhaps maybe not as exact? No, again, as I said, the healing symptoms come about after resolution. After the psyche resolves the conflict, most of our symptoms that we experience in life come about because there was a resolution in the psyche, right? So the skin rash, as we're going to see today, the skin rash comes about after the conflict has been resolved within the psyche. So then if something uh, persists, like let's say there's um, a case of shingles, for example, right. and that shingles continues so that it's like not just a, a few months, but it's a year or a year it's and chronic. a half. Right, it's chronic. That, that means that there are tracks that are happening, that, continual correct. triggers that are bringing that back up. Correct. Okay. Yep. Any any condition that is considered to be chronic or reoccurring will indicate that there are tracks. Okay. Good. Yes. Thank you. Excellent. But be uh, be aware though that this is this is so important. Is that because a lot of people we 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 tend to get hung up on resolution, resolving the conflict. It's easy. Oftentimes, it's very easy to identify the conflict shot, mm -hmm. right? But we oftentimes, because we're already experienced the healing symptoms, we overlook the very great fact that the psyche has resolved the conflict. That's why we have the healing symptoms. Okay. You see? So, so why is it that um, some in some cases? The healing happens extremely quickly. Okay. So you mean quickly in the sense that the it runs its course very quickly, like the skin rash appears and then is gone within a couple hours? Um, yes, or a cancerous lesion on the skin, mm -hmm. or that within a number of months it is it has been resolved completely. I mean, sure. what, deter what determines the speed of, of the healing, I guess, would be my wonderment about something that is so visible since. I would, uh, I would answer that question by saying what doesn't, what, what causes complication to slow down the healing? Okay. So one of the, the, the biggest thing. Okay that slows down the healing and, that, and what you're explaining Kathleen is is it's definitely potential it's people do heal very quickly the body can heal very quickly yes remarkably very quickly but there's often things in our environment people in our environment information that we are consuming in our environment that is fear based Okay. Right. And fear, as Dr. Hammer has uh, has described, is the number one complicating factor okay. that prevents healing. So, so that would that would um, make sense given my my own personal experience because I understood the element of fear and I refused to go into that. Sure. And Absolutely. and then all of the protocols that I applied at that during that healing phase. It was it was as if magic was happening by the week until finally the entire uh, lesion was resolved within a matter of months. So you're saying that the fear element is one that can hold the symptoms and move them into a chronic condition. Indeed, they Indeed. can be the trap. They can be the triggers. Each fear, element. fear is the complicating factor. Mm -hmm. Fear is the complicated factor, and then combine that with the tracks and the triggers, right? Okay. Combine that with a certain person that is associated with the original unexpected shock. Combine that with a, a certain smell or food that is associated with the original conflict shock. You see? Uh, so. Okay. 
so there's going to be the tracks, the, the, the pieces of information that our senses picked up on at the moment of the unexpected shock. And then there's fear. And you're going to, we're going to see today that a lot of the reasons why people develop symptoms, the, 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 the foundation, the reason why is the fear of disease, the fear of contagious disease. Okay. It's the fear of contracting a skin condition from somebody else, you see? Mm -hmm. And so fear is definitely a major, major factor that in your case, you definitely addressed and in, in in, in created an environment that was conducive and supportive to the natural healing of the body and the mind and the psyche, right? But a lot of people have trouble with fear. A lot of people are paralyzed by fear. A lot of people have so much within their psyche due to the age that we're in with all the information that's at our fingertips, the things that people say, the, what the, the authorities say, what they implant in our psyche, all this is, is at play in individual psyches and collectively right now it's fear based and so as dr hammer says he wants to guide us to an understanding of disease free of fear there's nothing to fear when we develop a fever and a headache there's nothing to fear when we develop a skin rash or a melanoma. There's nothing to fear when these symptoms of healing come about. Instead, they should be embraced for what they are, truly are, a miracle that we've been endowed with to, to handle whatever comes our way and the body's able to recover. You see? When I first um, started listening to, to what you had to say about German new medicine, that was the element that struck me the most was that our body is so brilliantly designed and, and, and can handle uh, even the unexpected shocks with, with a beauty and, um, yeah. and a gracefulness, truly, you know, and, as long as we get out of the way, right, and stop poisoning ourselves <laughs> with allopathic medicines. And, 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 and poisoning ourselves with narratives that are highly toxic. Yes. Yes. Narratives that are highly toxic and that disrupt the healing and create confusion and division. The narrative is really at the root of it all. What narrative is running in the psyche when we experience an unexpected shock right right mm -hmm. yes. so it's certainly it, the the brilliance and the beauty of how the body heals just continue the it deepens our awareness deepens of this beautiful fact the more we ground ourselves and anchor ourselves in the five biological laws and start to disassociate, break away from all the other narratives of causation. It's so important. You can't have one foot in the door and one foot out the door. You can, nobody's telling you not to, but I can assure you it will be a struggle to stay within the old paradigm of medicine and try to embrace and learn German new medicine, the new paradigm of medicine, health and healing. When you are straddling the fence, it, it, it's not going to end well for anybody involved. So what narratives are running? And where are you in 
on the fence, right? And again, it's everybody's choice. You can look at German new medicine and just push it off as some other mind body connection theory. And you can continue to dabble in all these other uh, theories out there that are saying that this is the reason why we're developing symptoms. And that's your choice. That's completely up to you. Or you can follow that innate guidance, mm -hmm. that internal guiding system saying, wait a minute, this is something absolutely brilliant, genius, and dive so deep into it, you will study for the rest of your life and apply it in every single case that happens in your life and with your loved ones. And your, your learning will deepen and deepen and deepen to a point where you become completely immune to all the other narratives of causation. Okay? Now, let me just say that I'm not ignoring some of these narratives like toxicity or EMF radiation, and the list goes on and on. I'm not ignoring that. I personally love to live in an environment that has a very minimal exposure to all this radiation and, and toxicity. I enjoy having a healthy diet, right, with organic foods. I'm not saying <laughs> that uh, it doesn't have a, a, a factor in it, in your overall well-being. And so, yes, we should minimize as much as we can. Get out in nature, or unplug and walk around in the woods as often as we can to clear the psyche, to connect with nature in our true nature of what we are a human animal. We are a human animal and we share these biological programs with all living creatures on this planet. And so our animals also experience skin conditions, as you know. Oh, yes. As you know. <laughs> and so we share these biological programs with other animals. And so this connection that we have also deepens with the learning of GNM. And so, yes, healthy lifestyle, healthy living, staying away from, from the, the radiation that, you know, exposure, right? The, the, all the technology that's here, right? And learn to balance it, but let go seriously let go of the causation of disease that's being pumped out there 24 7 yeah. right now 24 7 and it just creates confusion it creates fear and ultimately it hinders the natural healing of the body that's right but wouldn't you say i mean this is the um you know this is where they're metal meets the road, really. I mean, we're looking at um, allopathy, allopathic medicine that tells us to be afraid and tells us to attack every symptom with, with a drug or procedure that is toxic. Sure, right. And, and so it basically is a war against our own body's brilliance. We can also... Kathleen, we, we can also say holistic, quote unquote, medicine is also in the same camp well, to an extent, you know, so there are a lot of alternative practitioners out there that continue to stay within the old camp, the old dying disease paradigm. Well, well, that's true. But if you do you know, if you at least have stepped far enough away from allopathic medicine of germ theory and you go into the terrain theory, you at least have an understanding that the body 
has sure. a capacity to its own healing. And sure, then, you're, you're, you're certainly in a, a more advantageous position. Right. And but then, there's more. There's right. more. There's so what more. really what really <laughs> blew me away when we first started our interviews was, I mean, to understand at the bottom of this that we can control ourselves, but we control nothing outside of ourselves. So in life, when we're going along from day to day, and suddenly we have an unexpected event that shocks us, that is the trigger that puts us into a conflict stage. And, and that, that, that answered everything because it took away the new age movement concept of, well, what was your part in this? You know, it took away all the guilt and, and, yeah. and, just, and just the normal living of, of, a, of a man or a woman or a child interfacing with an unexpected shock. And then our body's brilliant capacity to be able to resolve the, the shock through the psyche, the mind and the body and then sure. situating the symptoms and then allowing those symptom, that symptom picture to play itself out. And we ate it because we eat organic foods and we make certain that we're out in nature and all of the things that you've listed. So there's, there, it, it is in its own um, um, paradigm, which is, I didn't understand that or expect that when we first started our conversations. <laughs> and, and it's brilliant, I love it. And um, the clarity of it is um, makes for a very gentle and very loving method of addressing life's shocks, unexpected shocks. Right. This is the this is the fifth biological law, Kathleen. The fifth biological law is also called disease. Also called disease is in reality, a special biological program designed to assist us, to help us, to yes. support us through the unexpected distress. That is it. That is the full enchilada, right? I said yeah. this before. It's it. And this is when it comes to practitioners out there working with people, this is the biological law that needs to be accepted yeah. in yeah. order for them to get into the right paradigm, mm -hmm. right? The yeah. paradigm that is completely aligned with natural law, mm -hmm. right? Yes. There is the, 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 the symptoms of disease are in reality the healing symptoms of nature. Right. And, and we, have been, we have been taught through allopathy that it's just the opposite. We must attack them. We must... It's all you know, upside we, down. Yeah. So, so the beauty of it is in its simplicity. That's right. And so with that being said... I encourage people who are coming to this body of knowledge and wisdom to be patient with oneself, be patient in your learning, mm -hmm. be patient with the, the, the resistance that may emerge as you begin to learn German new medicine. Just be patient and allow life to unfold and continue to come back, re-listen, re-read, immerse yourself, print the, the, the website out and read it every night, right? And you will see the truth. It will, and it will show up not only intellectually, but experientially, you will witness it as I have, as my family has, and a lot of my patient ha have. It's the experience that's going to deepen our learning and our awareness 
of these beautiful natural laws that were discovered over 30 years ago. Well, so, Chris, I, I, uh -huh. think, I think that's a really fine place to stop on part one for skin. And I look forward to our second. Excellent.